Hello, welcome to the Lettress Desk. Get your medical thoughts cleared before you leave. And please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell. Hello guys, welcome back to the Lettress Desk once again. Today we are going to talk about sinus rhythm and respiratory sinus arrhythmia. Starting with the sinus rhythm. The sinus rhythm is a normal rhythm of the heart which is being generated by the SNO, which is a natural pacemaker and is being characterized by a heart rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute. Now, let's look at the sinus rhythm. The sinus rhythm, how we can identify it on the EKG graph. Now, there are certain things or certain parameters that you must take into consideration when you are checking what a sinus rhythm on the EKG graph. Now, let's look at those parameters over here. We have the P wave, the PR interval, the QRS complex, and the RR interval. Are we clear with it? Now, if we come to the P wave, for a sinus rhythm, before we can know, before you can identify a sinus rhythm, you must know how the P wave or, or the, the state of the P wave on a certain list. Now, for a sinus rhythm, the P wave must be positive on this list, the D1, the D2, and the AVF. On this D list, the P wave must be positive. Now, let's look at the R PR interval. The PR interval too must be what normal. Already know a normal PR interval. And also the QRS complex must be normal also. The RR interval or the distance between two QRS complex might be what regular. When talk of regularity, it means there might be what equidistance between each RR intervals. Now let's come to the graph and look at or uh, and check if we can see all these parameters over here so that we can classify the graph as a sinus rhythm. Now, let's take the graph. I have my first telegraph here representing my sinus rhythm and then these two representing my respiratory sinus arrhythmia. Now, I'm talking about the sinus rhythm, so let's get into it. I have this one be magnified so you understand that one when i use it now on the d1 d2 and then the avf if you are representing this graph over there as um, a graph on the on this list d1 d2 and then the avf first thing we must take the p wave the p wave must be positive so for these three lists the p wave must be positive this is a P wave positive, 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 positive over there. Now, aside that, the second one is the PR interval. The PR interval must also be what normal. We know the normal PR interval, which is supposed to be between three to five small boxes. Are you clear with it? Now, aside that, let's come to the QR complex. The QR complex too must be normal. And also, each P wave, each P wave must have what a QR what complex. QR complex. So this is our P wave. We have QR complex. P Q R complex. P Q R complex. Now, and then the lastly, the regularity between the RR. So between one R and another R, they must be what regularity. That means they must be what equidistance between these QRS complexes that we have over there. So the distance between this and that must be equal to the distance between this and that. With that, we say there's what regularity or there's what the RR waves, they are regular. Are you clear with it? So this is what an idea or this is how we can identify sinus rhythm on the graph. But a sinus rhythm can be 
a bradycardia or it can be what a tachycardia. The bradycardia is the state in which the heart rate, instead of being 60 to 100, it is below that, which is below 60. And then instead of being 60 to 100, it, when it is above 100, it's being classified as a tachycardia. Now, let's look at something over here. Let's take this graph. This graph, if you look at it, the distance between what they are, are, they are what? They are wide. You understand? But let's do calculation and see if it gives what? A bradycardia or give us a value less than 60. Now, I said to calculate the rate for the big, big boxes, we divide 300 by the number of what big boxes we can find between R wave and another R wave. Now, when it is what regular. So now let's look at this one. We have this R wave to this R wave. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have 6 big boxes. So with these 6 big boxes, you divide 300 by 6. And we are going to get what 50 beats per minute so this gives us what a bradycardia so this graph is a bradycardia now let's come to this one and see now what is the distance between r and r how many big boxes can we find we can find one two are you clear with it we have one two big boxes so, and we have small one uh, box over there, that's one small box. Now, if you divide 300, if we divide 300 by 2, we are going to get 150. Do you understand? And then, this 150 is above 100. So, because of that, we say it is what? A tachycardia. So the, the, the tachycardia is when it is more than 100 and then the bradycardia is when it's what less than um, 60. Now, we have conditions in which a sinus rhythm can be what in the tachycardia state or can be what a bradycardia state. Now, let's take some few examples. One, when the person having hypothermia, the person will get a bradycardia. Two, when the person having hypothyroidism, the person will also get what? A bradycardia and also when a person is using certain drugs like um, beta blockers the person will get a tachycardia or when the person a, a bradycardia or and then the, when the person is having a certain drug like digosin the person will also develop what a bradycardia now let's come to the tachycardia tachycardia we have certain drugs like adrenaline and then we have a sabotamol they also what increases what the heart rate. It's not only that. We have heat. Heat increases the heart rate. We have exercise, anxiety. They all contribute to the increment of the heart rate. So when a person having what a sinus um, tachycardia sinus rhythm, you must think of what these what things. And when a person having what a bradycardia sinus rhythm, you must think of what those ones that I've already mentioned. Now, let's come to the respiratory sinus arrhythmia. It's a variation from the sinus rhythm. It obeys all the rules over here. It obeys all the rules over here, except this one. It is making it irregular. So we say it is what a variation from the SR which is the sinus rhythm. Now, what is it? The respiratory sinus arrhythmia. It happens when persons are undergoing breathing. If you are undergoing breathing, you take in air, that's the inhalation, and then you give out air, which is what exhalation. During this process, there's what interaction between the respiratory system and the cardiovascular system. Thereby, in the, in the process, there's increase in the intrathoracic pressure. And this causes the increment and what the decrease in what the heart rate, giving what the irregularity. Now, 
when taking a, what happens is the valvus nerves that controls the SA node get inhibited. And because of that, there's what an increase in the heart rate. And then when you are give out air, the valvus nerves become what free from the inhibition and then controls what the heart rate. You understand at the sinus node. Because of that, in the in an exhalation, you are going to get a slow heart rate, and then in an inhalation, you are going to get what an increase in what in heart rate. But there's a difference between respiratory sinus arrhythmia and then the normal arrhythmias. And what is it? Respiratory sinus arrhythmia follows the pattern of what the normal way of respiration. So as you take in, there's an increment. As you give out, there's a decrease. You take in, increase, you give us, there's what a decrease. So this pattern must give you the idea of the respiratory sinus arrhythmia. Unlike other arrhythmias or the normal arrhythmia that we know, for that one, it doesn't follow the pattern of that res respiration. I will clear with it. If the, 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 if the person will be having a fast irregularity, that fast irregularity will be what, will be what continuous. And if the person will be having what, a slow irregularity, that slow irregularity will also what continuous. But for the respiratory sinus arrhythmias, there's what a um, small portion, which is what fast, small portion, which is what low, another one fast, another one low. So give what the 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 form of what respiration over there. Are we clear with it now? So this is what basically how is it? So as you take in, as you take in, got the person taking in a. There's what increase in what the heart rate, and then when the person is giving out, there's what a decrease in heart rate. So if you come here, there's what increase in heart rate at this part. There's decrease, increase. There's a decrease. So this gives you that idea of the respiratory sinus arrhythmia, and this is what if it's a physiological phenomenon. So we consider it as what a condition which is normal. And it mostly happens in what in the in the young people you understand so this is how um, the respiratory sinus arrhythmia is being what calculated or is being what identified using the graph and then the sinus rhythm also is using what the graph so if you find the video useful this is the end so if you find the video useful please like share and subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so that whenever i post or i bring new video you'll be the first person to watch and also recommend it to a friend so that we all can enjoy the usefulness of this channel thank you for staying with me till this time see you in my next video